Thank you for inviting me to be here today. I think I have about 15 minutes, uh, and uh, I've provided quite a bit of information to you beforehand, so um, hopefully you had a chance to, to glance at it. You know, before I jump into the presentation, so, you know, what what is it? You know, growing resilience in Tacoma and GRIT. You know, GRIT stands for, um, well, growing resilience in Tacoma. Uh, it's Guaranteed Income Cash Assistance Initiative. The first demonstration was done in collaboration with the City of Tacoma and Mayors for a Guaranteed Income uh, and United Way, and there were 110 individuals that were randomly selected. This was a, a controlled research project that was done um, through the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, so we had 110 individuals receiving $500 a month, uh, and that ended in December of, tw the last payment was in December of 2022. So GRIT 2.0, it was funded through a proviso uh, dollars from the state of Washington, uh, State Bill 5187. Uh, and uh, this was really part of a, uh, a bigger um, kind of move towards seeing if we could get something within the state, statewide guaranteed income. Um, but. Uh, we received the $1.9 million from that state proviso um, to be able to implement and extend the guaranteed income program that's currently that was going on in Tacoma. Um, the second one, the 2.0, is a partnership with the Washington um, Department of Social and Health, uh, Health Services, City of Tacoma, and Pierce County. You know, guaranteed income, where it's different from universal income, guaranteed income is really uh, about serving populations that are disproportionately affected by economic challenges. And what we know about guaranteed income is that it's proven effective way to combat a lot of economic uh, factors, economic mobility. You, know, you have the coronavirus, the pandemic, uh, really kind of lifted the hood uh, and showed us, you know, a, a lot of the um, barriers and just the disproportionality of, of how individuals are impacted uh, during the uh, pandemic. Uh, we talk a lot at United Way about a population called Alice, Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. Well, Alice didn't weather the pandemic very well. Uh, data is going to be coming out that's going to show that the Alice population here in Tacoma, uh, in, Tacoma in Pierce County uh, has gone up uh, from 31 percent to 34 percent, and that's going to be based on the 2022 um, uh, census information. Ms. Ponapinto, the presentation is loaded for you, so if you okay, still want to say yes. next slide, Mr. Weinsberry will <laughs> okay, move it for next, you. I know. I, I said beforehand I have to be reminded. Okay. You can go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, the guaranteed income was designed to do three things. Uh, it was to demonstrate how a, a modest, no strings attached cash gift can improve economic stability, housing security, mental health, and well being, and reduce uh, poverty in our community. Uh, these recurring cash payments are monthly, uh, they are considered a gift, it's not taxable. Uh, it's also not a new idea. This has been going on uh, in COVID, uh, other demonstrations across the country. Uh, in Alaska, it's been going on for decades. Uh, second, uh, supplemental to other safety net supports that's intended to really help families meet their basic needs and weather financial uh, emergencies. We know that at $6,000 a year, family, individuals are not quitting their jobs. Um, they, in fact, to be a part of GRIT, you need to be working. So that is one of the requirements because we're focused on the Alice population. Uh, and then uh, families also, this is about dignity. Families understand uh, their, uh, their needs best and guaranteed income seeks to empower them to make decisions for themselves. And then the third, uh, uh, third thing is, this is really the nat natural evolution of a lot of work that has been going on uh, in our community to really dismantle poverty and showcase the need for systems, uh, sy systems transformation 
proclamation. And, you know, Stacy and the, the groups that uh, received the proclamation really talked about systems uh, and, and changing the systems, that the solutions are there. We have to figure out how do we uh, address the systems and all of those barriers within systems. So um, she, she was absolutely right on about hunger and so many other systems that are really barriers for families. You can go to the next slide. And so the goals and what I like to think of as the principles of guaranteed uh, this GRIT 2.0, investing in those Alice families and working towards equity. You know, they're already struggling. They continue to struggle, again, as a result of um, uh, co coming out of COVID. Cultivating resilience by empowering families, again, to make the decisions, to manage their crisis on their own terms, uh, and changing the narrative uh, through storytelling. Uh, data to build a case for increasing equity. And that's really a lot of what this whole mayors for a guaranteed income and the counties for the guaranteed income is trying to do, is to really change the narrative on how we think about Alice families, how we think about families that are getting up every day, working more than one job, trying to make ends meet. That um, you know, poverty is a systems failure and not a personal failure. We've got to change the narrative. Uh, building support by leverage leveraging learnings and experiences for unconditional cash programs and other strength-based policies. So again, this is looking at how do we, um, how do we affect uh, state policies, how do we affect policies at the federal level. You know, the existing structures, many of the existing structures that are there for families, that are meant to help families, actually are incentivizing individuals not to increase their earnings as they may not uh, be, because they may lose those very supports that they need to move towards economic mobility. Child care, for instance, one of the largest expenses in a family. You make one penny more and you lose your child care. You lose it. It isn't gradual. You lose it. You know, same for food assistance. You make too much money. Uh, there's a gradual decline uh, in the very thing that you need to be able to move towards economic mobility. You can go to the next slide. So this is a highlights. You know, our key partners uh, for 2.0, uh, you know, I've, I've talked about that. We also have a 10-member steering committee. So we have a steering committee made up of individuals that are advising, uh, helping us to um, uh, think about what are the questions we need to be asking. Because one, the GRIT 1.0 <laughs> uh, that, that was part of the Mayors for Guaranteed Income, we were very limited because it was a national part of a national research effort, there were things that we couldn't ask. In fact, we don't even have the final report. Um, they, we should be getting the final report from the first GRIT uh, a demonstration in May, and that'll you know, tell us a lot about what we you know learning about those 110 individuals. 2.0 is going to give us an opportunity to get data faster because we're not under all of those restrictions. So what kinds of survey questions do we want to ask? What do we want to find? out um, about these participants in the program. Uh, so that, I'm really excited about that because real-time data will help uh, continue to build a case why you know, these types of programs are, are good for the community and good for the economy. Uh, the 175 participants, they're, um, and I'll go into the criteria in a second, and this individualized benefits counseling provided for recipients. This is really important because benefits, um, you know, again, you could be harm. you don't want to harm. This isn't meant to harm families. And so this benefits counseling is really important at the beginning, and it's also important at the, at the end. So lots of onboarding uh, goes on uh, within this process. Next slide. So the eligibility requirements, single head of households uh, with children through age 17 or through age 21 if the child had a disability, residing in one of those, the following zip codes. We added 98444 and 98445, which is the Spanaway, Parkland area, which many of those areas use Tacoma as uh, their address. 
meets the Alice definition, this was really important because, again, we wanted to change the narrative. We wanted to show that working families are working hard every day and just can't make ends meet. Um, income uh, below, the, the income level is below 100 percent of poverty and 200 uh, 200 percent of federal poverty level. And when you think about it, po the federal poverty level for a family of four is $30,000. And it's the same across the country, no matter where you live. And there's a movement going on. In fact, there's a bill, I think, that's being considered um, at the federal level to change the federal poverty level. Because right now, I mean, you even at 200 percent of poverty level, most families of four cannot make ends meet. Uh, so, uh, but we were looking at those families that were at least working again, and many of them are working more than one job. Uh, you can go to the next slide. You know, the, the other thing about the Alice family, uh, before I leave it, uh, their survival budget, the new, new estate is going to be coming out in May, but the survival budget here in Pierce County for a family of four is $98,000, and that's survival. Uh, the uh, stability budget, um, I don't know what the stability budget is for 2020, uh, based on the 22 numbers, uh, but it was 130000 for a family of four based on the 20, uh, 2020 data. Uh, so I'm sure it's, it's going to go up. So again, keeping that in mind, the, the challenges families uh, make. Okay, now, okay, you've got the, that slide. In addition to the previous requirements, a couple of things that we were looking at uh, is parent guardian is attending school, college, or working to complete some type of training or apprenticeship program. Uh, and then someone in the household um, may be justice involved, can be a parent guardian or someone in the immediate family that affects the income in the, that family. So it, it isn't required, but we reached out to those, po we wanted to make sure that those populations were in the mix. So you can go to the next slide. So the current process, we got over 2,000 applications. Uh, 1,200 of those were eligible to, uh, once, re uh, once we reviewed everything. And this was random. So United Way, no one knows who these individuals are. We work with a company called Steady. Uh, they, we worked with them the first time around, and they were the distributors of the, the cash uh, gifts uh, monthly. This time, they've, ex we've ex they've expanded their role, and so they help with the randomization. So out of that randomization, 25% 25, 25 of the applicants are uh, Spanish-speaking, 175 participants uh, uh, were selected and notified on March 14th. Three have declined to date uh, for a variety of uh, reasons. I believe two because of the benefits uh, cliff that they were going to hit. Um, it's, uh, it was 108 when I did this slide. It's now 145 uh, individuals that have been um, gone through onboarding and vetted. And all of those 145 have received an initial incentive um, uh, gift of, I think it's $150, uh, $150. And they'll start to get those payments starting April 1st, uh, April 15th, uh, $500 a month through March of next year. Uh, let's see, all participants are, again, going through onboarding. The evaluation, the state is requiring us to do both a qualitative and quantitative evaluation of this process. Uh, and then, the, the, again, the benefits counseling, um, because, you know, it's really important for us. We want to help families, not uh, do harm to families. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple of other statistics. Um, race and ethnicity-wise, 29% are African-American, 27% uh, Latino, 24% uh, white, uh, Native American, or Native uh, American, 2%, uh, and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, 3.4%, multiple others, uh, uh, racial groups, 12%. Uh, gender, mostly female, 70% of uh, the, um, the recipients are are female and 24% are male. 
the um, zip codes seem to be pretty balanced. Um, we have the most in 9444 at 22%, 20% uh, in 9404, and 20% in 9408. So that's some, some of that. Um, in terms of employment, 52% uh, uh, gig, work, gig workers uh, or seasonal, and then 47% are full time. So the last slide just is, uh, I, I like referring to this because so many of the, the, the storytellers in the 110 really talked about this giving them a chance to breathe. You know, you know, she says, I felt so much less month to month stress since the program started. It feels like I have some room to breathe. And I have a feeling we're gonna hear more and more of that as we continue this effort.